Kyphus Cade. Last Night at the Resplendent by Sandy Mitchell. As I spent most of my life relenting around the galaxy, and more of it than I'm comfortable with in a state of moral danger, hysterical panic, or both, the rare quiet interludes tend to stand out more clearly in my memory as I've gotten older. Of these, one of the longest was a couple of years or so I spent on Kirtha, in the early days of my career. Not that it was entirely without incident. Like the time I found myself facing a gene-stealer horde with only my aide Jürgen, a couple of local constables, and a handful of hungover guardsmen to hide behind. But all in all, it was a relatively uneventful period, which I look back on with faint air of nostalgia. If you read any of my previous reminiscences of the time I spent with the 12th Field Artillery, my first assignment after being kicked out of the Scholar Progenium, with a new scarlet sash and a heartfelt sigh of relief of most of my instructors, you won't be surprised to know that when one of the more memorable bits of unwanted excitement occurred, it was all Davis' fault. Torrin Davis was a junior lieutenant in the battery. And as our duties, which in this case included the administrative trivia, Colonel Monstru, couldn't be bothered with, especially if it involved interacting with me. Brought us together on more than less daily basis. He was about the closest thing I had to a friend among guardsmen, whose morale and discipline I was supposed to be taking interest in, since... He had an exaggerated opinion of his abilities as a tarot player, which pretty much amounted to a gift from the Emperor whenever I found myself a little short of currency. I generally found his company congenial enough, apart from his habit of using the familiar form of my given name, which I found irritating in the extreme, a fact that he failed to pick up on so comprehensively that I eventually gave up even attempting to draw the matter to his attention. Kai, my man! He strolled into my office, breezing past Jürgen, with every sign of completely failing to notice my aide's attempt to impede his progress. Not wanting to have to smooth things over after he left, Jürgen, having the tendency to regard any breach of protocol, as not far short of spitting on the Aquila. I caught my aide's eye and nodded, at which point he retreated behind his desk and resumed his pursuit of erotic material on the data slate. Glancing up now and again to glower at my visitor's oblivious back. Doing anything this evening? Depends on what the gunners get up to, I replied, with a quick glance at the Leave Roster. None of the most reliable troublemakers had a pass that night, so I was unlikely to be called to the scene of a major incident. Probably all I have to do was make the by now familiar trip down to the local law enforcement office to collect the night's gutter sweepings in the morning. A by no means unpleasant chore when when Thoreau were senior sergeant was on duty, but she was the in the planetary capital, briefing the Kelfian Arbeit's office on the hunt for the still-missing patriarch of the gene-stealer brood. We stumbled across together, which meant my preferred choice of companion would be the unavailable for another week at least. What did you have in mind? Take it to the music hall, Davis said producing them from a pocket of his fatigues with an air of having successfully performed a conjuring trick. I got two. Wonder if you'd like to join me. Might as well. I agreed. But what about that girl you've so keen on? He'd been mooning over some local civilian in the tithing office for weeks, trying to pluck up the courage to talk to her about something more interesting than Provender supplies to the battery, and this would have been the perfect opportunity to get to know her better. Then my brain caught up with my mouth, and I adopted the approximately sympathetic expression. 
Oh. Turned you down, did she? Davis colored a little. Not as such, he said. She caught up to in the, in the purge. Turned out to be one of the hybrids from the brood you uncovered. Oh, I said again, uncharacteristically at a loss. I'm sorry. Then a rather more alarming possibility presented itself. You didn't, you know, kiss her or anything more intimate, did you? The worst thing about the whole episode had been the way the brood had been spreading its taint to unweary guardsmen. Its collective mind absorbing theirs as their genes mingled in altered alliance, only becoming clear when they turned on their comrades without warning. Davis flushed. Never got a chance, he said, to my intense relief. I was hoping if I asked her out... Mm. He shrugged. Anyway. I already had the tickets, and it seems a shame to waste them. So, indeed it does. I said with uh, all the enthusiasm I could feign. Singers and acrobats weren't really my cup of tenor. But the absence of Withina, and with the bars of the gambling dens, I... Normally frequented, either closed down or being periodically visited by jumpy guardsmen with lasguns on the lookout for undetected hybrids. My recreational options seem somewhat limited at the moment. Besides, Davis was looking as though someone had just kicked his puppy, and I felt vaguely responsible for that. I hadn't actually set out to kill his putative girlfriend, just saved my own neck when the brood turned on me. But at least I can do was ensure that he had a memorable night out. Which we did, though hardly in the manner either of us would have wished. The theater was in one of the less suburbious parts of town, although not quite as inscrutious as the parts I would have gone looking for entertainment in a normal course of events. Situated about halfway along a wide thoroughfare crowded with civilians who gawped at me as we passed, and guardsmen who suddenly found something very interesting on the other side of the street as soon as they caught sight of my uniform. Not every other building in sight was a hostelry, but the majority of them were, the rest being devoted to the purveyance of refreshments hardly more appetizing than the usual guard rations were the kind of kaffaws the average trooper fondly imagined would win the heart, or some parts of the anatomy at least, of one of the locals. Seems a little lively of this kind of place, Davis commented happily, skirting the stall of a vendor of a deep-fried gristle, while I inscrupulently drove the pommel of my chainsword into the sternum of a local scoffle, whose fingers had wandered a little too close to my companion's pocket under the pretext of making a way for him. It certainly does, I agreed, nodding courteously to a gaggle of dolly mops lurking in the nearby alley, who'd been following our progress with interest, and who immediately deserved into giggles. Probably best David's didn't notice them in his current lovelorn state. So I picked up my pace a little, and steered him into the stream of theatre-goers, converging on our destination. I nodded at the name above the marquee, picked out in garnish illuminated lettering. They were splendid. Nicely understated. Sounds like a starship to me, Davis said. Well... I've traveled on a few with stranger names, even at that early stage of my career, so I simply nodded as we stepped through the glazed wooden doors into the lobby. I'm sure you've seen similar places yourself, so I'll spare you with much in the way of description. There are plenty like it in many other plant monetary size imperial settlements, varying only in their building materials and degree of sickness of their carpets and the degree of stickiness in the carpets. 
This one was heavy on dark wood, naturally enough for an agony world. Its floor covered with a migraine-inducing pattern of red and green swirls, most of which had fortunately hidden beneath the feet of the patrons picking out the place in an interesting variety of stains, the origins of which I preferred not to speculate about. Either the respect due to our uniforms or the visible side arms we are carrying parroted the crowds in a most satisfactory manner. And Davis and I found ourselves standing in front of a small window above a chipped and battered counter, being gawped at by the scrawny youth with prominent front teeth, lank, greasy hair, and a faintly distracted air. You I me, ain't ya? he demanded, as though disinclined to take my word for it. That commas are crying that did em for them roaches. Close enough, I said, barely restraining my exchange. Barely registering the exchange. It was hardly the first time when the locals had recognized me, although since Kamazars weren't exactly thick on the ground around Pegasus, Pever, it never came as much a surprise. Goofy! He inspected the tickets Davis held out, in a matter so perfectionary that they might just as well been remained in his pocket, and plucked a small bag of cuppa nuts from a rack behind the counter. There you go. On the house. Thank you. I said, becoming aware of the degree of attention Davis and I were now attracting, and playing to the crowd in a manner that, that was already beginning to become second nature to me. Though we were only doing our duty to the Emperor, of course. Who's that to you? youth asked, his jaw becoming even slacker as he turned to Davis for a moment, then reached for a second packet of nuts. Least we could do for a hero. Most kind, <laughs> I said, passing them swiftly to Davis before he had time to put the record straight, and scanning the lobby for a way to our seats. I think we could do better than a couple of snacks to show our appreciation. A new voice cut in, right behind my left shoulder. I turned to find my eyes level with the top of a balding plate, lightly dusted with dandruff, surmounting a head with what looked like slightly overstuffed, especially around the jowls, protruding from a formal robe, which had clearly seen better days, but which could probably barely remember how long ago they'd been. A hand emerged in the folds and hovered uncertainly for a moment, before realizing I wasn't going to shake it and dragging the arm it was attached to back into the florid of theatrical bow. Ramos de Vorna, owner and manager of this fine establishment. I've seldom seen anything to equal it. I said, truthfully enough. You're too kind, Denvero said, visibly suppressing the urge to bow again. He gestured towards a curtain in the wall behind him. Perhaps you gentlemen would care to avail yourselves to my private box. It's a great deal more comfortable than the public seats. We wouldn't want to imp We'd be delighted, I cut in hastily overriding Davis before he even began. The main auditorium would be rammed with patrons, judging by the number of people passing through the lobby, and most of them had paused to gop at us on the way in. It was carrots and crowns, half of them would carry on doing it throughout the performance. Though I'm never advised to be in the center of attention when it doesn't involve incoming fire. I had no wish to be forced to make polite conversation with vicarious civilians for most of the night. The pleasure is all ours, Dinvora assured us, holding the curtain aside to let us pass. 
As Davis and I vanished through it, I thought our disappearance was marked by a faint murmur of disappointment from the patrons. Although it could have been Davis' stomach, punctuations to a fault. It wouldn't have been the first time he'd become so engrossed in vile shuffling he'd forgotten to eat. Right this way, if you please. Looking around as the curtains fell back into place, I found myself in a wide corridor with stairs rising to the left and descending on my right. In a distant smell of stale food, damp carpet and a faint trace of undiscovered diseased rodent seasoning the atmosphere. A number of boxes I had stacked to one side of the curtain, containing more nuts and other consumables according to the labels. Well, enough other distress had been allowed to accumulate in the corridor, that the space available to walk in was barely adequate for a single person to navigate. Denvora indicated the raising staircase. Just up here, gentlemen, he said, leading the way. Davis followed with a curious glance at the descending flight. Where does that go? he asked. Denvora shrugged. The cellars? he said. We store everything we don't need for the current show down there, and it's hardly a shortcut to the stage door. They must be rather full by now, I said with the last glance at the back of the discarded props littering the floor of the passageway behind us. Not at all, Dinvora said, as we passed into another, less cluttered corridor, apparently running just above the first. There's been a theater on this site for centuries, and the cellars go down for several levels. This wasn't that unusual in imperial settlements, where old streets were often built over by subsequent generations. I've seen abandoned undercities which practically qualified as hives in their own right. Although something that size would take millennia to a crate. Though I dare say no one set foot in the lowest cellars in decades. Apart from search parties, I said, and Denvoro nodded. Apart from them, of course. The Arbi's planetary militia and Imperial Guard had been rummaging around since the Gene Stealer incident, getting in one another's way as often as not, and I counted myself lucky not to have been directly involved in the ongoing search for stray hybrids and the ever elusive Blue Lord. I didn't escort them myself, but they seemed satisfied enough. Dindvar came to a halt midway down the corridor. Here we are. He was standing between a pair of doors which faced each other. One open, revealing a surprisingly tidy office. He reached out to open the other, unleashing a torrent of noise from beyond it, then stood aside to let Davis and me pass through. Aren't you joining us? David asked, and Dinvor shook his head dusting his own shoulders with a scattering of dandruff as he did so. Too much ado, I'm afraid, he glanced, with what looked like genuine regret at the desk in the office. But enjoy the performance and make yourselves at home. You'll find refreshments in the cabinet if you need anything. Horus is on the other end of the sparkling tube, with which he dispersed into a sanctum and closed the door. Davis and I took our seats, which did indeed afford us a far better view of the stage than the ones we'd been due to Ocumpy. Mildly curious, I spent a moment or two scanning the crowded auditorium in search for them, before giving it up as a bad job, especially since I realized that leaning too far out across the bolster trade rendered me equally visible to the patrons below and a few of them began to jostle and point in our direction. Well, this is comfortable, Davis said, and I found myself forced to agree. The dozen or so seats arranged in two rows were agreeably padded, and each was accompanied by an occasional table, which tried to very hard to look like an antique. Although they 
manifestly weren't. Denvor clearly used the place far more than his own entertainment, and I found myself warning to our extremely host, especially once I'd taken him at his word and investigated the contents of the covered wooden cabinets beside the door. It contained a rack of goblets and an array of dissenters, most of which I felt honor-bound to taste before setting on a nicely matured local amistic. It certainly is, I agreed, pouring him a generous measure, and positively fell a thorpk, one for myself. What's first on the program? Having a clue, Davis said cheerfully, as I resumed my seat. I was going to grab one on the way in. He shrugged. But I'm sure we'll get the gist of it. No doubt we will, I said. An exception which proved to be well-founded. There were indeed singers and jugglers, not to mention acrobats. A young lady whose costume looked distinctly chilly, but whose abilities seemed unaffected by the discomfort. And a comedian whose constant allusions to Calfian people, places, and social connections meant nothing to me, but left most of the audience convulsed. Perhaps the mellow spirit I'd been drinking, which the nuts did little to soak up, was permanently responsible. But all in all, I found myself having much better time of it than I'd anticipated. At least until the last act had taken the curtain call, and a familiar figure strolled out onto the stage. Thank you all for coming tonight, Denvor said, as a spotlight kindled and began to follow him. We're honored by your patronage, as always. A ripple of self-congratulatory applause echoed around the auditorium. And especially honored tonight by the presence of our hero, who put his own life on the risk to keep us all safe from the enemy within. Get up, Torin, I said, already suiting the action to the word. We're leaving. Are we? Davis drained the dregs of his third and fourth emsick in full suit, swaying a little before regaining his balance. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the celebrated Kama's Arcane. The spotlight swung around and up, blinding me for a moment, and a sudden tsunami of applause battered my ears. We are, I've said firmly, making the best of it, and waving in the general direction of the noise, which predictably redoubled. Still blinking, I led the way to the rear of the box and swung the door open. I suppose I should have expected something of the sort, but it still ranked a little. Emperor alone knew how we were going to make it back to the battery now. The lobby, not to mention the surrounding streets, would be packed with civilians wanting to catch a glimpse of the new local hero. And hewing past them with my chainsword wasn't really an option. I tapped the comm beat in my ear. Jürgen, could you get a hold of a salamander and meet us outside the theater on 5 Brussel Street? Be with you before you know it. Maid chewed and swallowed something before resuming in a slightly clearer voice. Leave it now. We'll be waiting, I said, letting the door swing closed behind us, cutting off the noise and the a tunic glare. I took hold of Davis' arm, partly to urge him on and partly to keep him upright. Come on, maybe we can make it out before the lobby gets too full. A hope which became extinguished the moment we reached the bottom of the stairs. A babble of overlapping voices was swelling behind the curtain leading to the entrance hall. In a quick, cautious glance through the gap at the edge of it was enough to confirm my worst fears. The place was completely packed, with barely enough room left to squeeze in a rattling. Never mind a couple of Imperial Guard officers. What now? Davis asked, and I shook my head, non-pulsed for the moment. Then my left eye filmed ascending stairs opposite, 
and I remembered Denvoa's offhand comment a couple of hours before. Down here, I said, getting him moving again with a quick tug on his arm, and making for the stairwell as quickly and quietly as possible. Although the crowd was making so much noise, there didn't seem much point in trying to be stealthy. I activated my vox beat again. Jürgen, make for the stage door if possible. He's right there, sir. He assured me. The growl of a powerful engine starting up muffled the last of his words. Five or ten minutes, depending on traffic. Take your time, I told him, mindful of my aid and how he drove, and not wanting to bother processing the mountain of paperwork that would be piling up on as any civilian casualties. I started down the stairwell, my footfalls muffled by the carpet, Davis matching my pace, though a trifle less steadily. After a moment of observation, I felt suddenly reassured that he wasn't about to miss his footing and tumble the rest of the way, taking me with him, and return my attention to whatever awaited us at the bottom. It was, of course, another corridor, this time uncarpeted and lined with brick, though no less cluttered than the one we just left, which from another staircase descended into fitfully illuminated darkness. Which way? Davis asked. Throne knows, I replied. And Vora had told us this way was to the stage door, but as neither of us had the faintest idea where that exactly was, my knack of remaining orientated in unfamiliar environments wasn't going to help much. I was just beginning to consider returning to the lobby after all, and requesting a squad of troopers to escort us out when I heard footsteps ascending the stairwell facing us. A moment later, the youth from the ticket booth appeared, bouncing a couple of boxes of fresh nuts, presumably to replenish the supply so badly depleted by the throng of our admirers upstairs. He blinked as he registered our presence. Can I help? He asked in a tone which vaguely suggested he'd rather not. Can I help? He asked in a tone which vaguely suggested that he'd rather not, if any effort were involved. What's the quickest way out of here? I asked, his eyes unfocused for a moment as though the answer required some serious consideration. Down here, he said, dropping the boxes and standing aside for us. Further on the quaff before the stage up pass, the dressing rooms. Frack it, best I show you. You'd be wandering around down here, old thing, the night otherwise. He turned and began to descend again, without another word. Thanks, Davis said. Much appreciated. The staircase led down to the vast and dimly lit cellar, packed in decorated props and sets, supported on a series of brick pillars about three times my height in which I could barely have got my arms around. We progressed through them in a series of zigzags, following whatever clear space had been left between the junk deposited there, which soon left Davis completely disoriented. Are you sure this is the right way? He asked, and the youth nodded. Of course, he said. No, like the back of me hand. And for you? He ducked beneath a low brick arch, and we found ourselves on another staircase, descending in a tight spiral. The cellar it led us to was smaller and must have been adjacent to some of the loading dock, as a number of crates were stacked more or less neatly between the supporting pillars. A tunnel led off to one side, wide and high enough to drive a truck down and raising towards street level in a general slope. Thanks, I said, taking a couple of steps toward it. But our guide shook his head. Nor that way, he said. It's a dead end. He turned and tugged at the loose brick in the wall. 
Danny. A section of the wall pivoted on wall well-greased runners, revealing another passage which appeared to lead further down into the bowels of the earth. Davis trotted happily toward it, but I hesitated. The air current flowing from below was rank, like a breath from a diseased lung. Before I could express my doubts, however, a new voice hailed us. Boris, what are you doing down here? Then Vora appeared at the mouth of the tunnel, I had previously noticed, pushing a cart loaded with boxes which appeared to contain more refreshments. Catching sight of Davis and me, he smiled and nodded. Did you enjoy... His eyes fell on the hole in the wall and his, uh, and his jaw dropped. What the hell is that? He moved in to inspect it, glaring suspiciously at Oris. Did you know it was down here? Of course he did, I said, drawing my last pistol. Suspicion hardening to certainty as I registered the calm expression on the youth's face. His eyes were unfocused again, but this time I didn't mistake it for sluggish thought processes of a dull and unimaginative civilian. He's a hybrid. Communicating with the brood mind, telling what was left of the swarm precisely where we were. He's a what? Denvora asked, struggling to take in the unexpected development. I don't suppose he ever quite got it before something inhumanly fast burst through the concealed entrance. A third arm tipped the razor ship claws, reaching out to rip his head from his shoulders in a water of blood. Davis reached with commendable speed, considering how drunk he was, drawing his last pistol and blazing away at the ghastly apparition with rather more enthusiasm than accuracy. A couple of bolts hit home, however, gouging echo sleeping craters in the hybrid sinuous carapace, and making a bit of a mess of the flouncy ball gown it was wearing, which distracted it nicely, while I lined up a rather more accurate shot to the head to finish it off. Look out, Kai! Davis yelled as Aura sprang at me, his jaw enlarging to a unnatural extent, revealing a line of viciously curved fangs. I shot him twice in the chest and he slumped to this ground, emitting a high-pitched kneading which set my teeth on edge. Jürgen, where are you? I voxed while Davis activated his own comm bead and began babbling to the regiment command post about the situation we unexpectedly found ourselves in. Some backup would indeed be nice, I thought. But under the circumstances, it was unlikely to materialize before we would no longer need it. One way or another. Couple of minutes out, Jürgen said. But I can't get near the theater. Streets full of civvies. For a moment, I found myself thinking unkindly of the Imspertu lying dead at my feet whose attempt to use my presence to publicize his theater had attracted all these goppers to get in the way. Soon this was overridden by rather more pressing concerns, as an omnibus scuttling noise echoed from the depths of the tunnel Oris had revealed. This way, I said, making for the wide sloping passageway Denvor had appeared from. But it's a dead end! Davis objected, pedaling after me anyway. At least it was away from the downed hybrids, and Throne alone knew what else might be lurking in the darkness below. He was lying, I said, hoping I was right. Jürgen, there, be sh there should be some kind of loading dock on the north side of the building. We're heading for that now. Right you are, sir. The background growling of the salamander engine rose in pitch. Side streets are a bit clearer. Should be able to get around there. We'll be waiting, I said. Hoping we'll live long enough to do so. The floor in the passageway was smooth at least. The gentle slope hardly a challenge. And I began to feel cautiously optimistic. Steelers were hellish fast, of course. 
I'd seen that for myself. We had a good start on them. Throne of Terror! Davis gasped, glancing back and putting on an additional turn of speed, hardly daring so. I turned and immediately wished I hadn't. The passage was almost filled with a vast and ominous silhouette, two or three times the size of any gene stealer I'd ever seen. At least we know where the Broodlord is now, I said, cracking off a couple of las boats, which expended themselves against the thickly armored Ketapis about as effectively as I'd been blowing kisses at it. Davis was yammering on the Voxlink again, reporting the sighting, but that wasn't going to do either of us much good at a time. Well, at this moment. I drew my chainsword, which at least made me feel better. But the idea of taking on a biological killing machine in such cramped conditions was not exactly appealing. It's gaining, Davis said, which was hardly encouraging. We both unleashed a fusillade of las bolts against it, in the vague hope of slowing it down. But if anything, that only seemed to encourage the monstrosity. It raised its head, tongue lolling and screaming, the sound striking at us like a pressure wave of an explosion. Ancient brickwork rent and tore under the talons, as long as any forearm gouging into it for purchase as the towering creature bounded at us. It reached out, clutching greedily. I grabbed Davis by the shirt collar, yanking him aside as the claws which would have shredded him snapped into a fist where he had been a second before, and we both rolled, ducking under the creature's reach. I took the opportunity to swipe at the patriarch's extended arm, the whirling teeth of my chainsword whining as they bit deep into the exoskeleton, and a gush of foul-smelling ichor spattered both of us and our surroundings. We rolled to our feet, backed against the wall, ancient brick dust trickling the back of my neck. The broodlord backed up, trying to face us, finding it was hard to turn in the confined space. And I lashed out again, trying to fend it off. Davis was shooting las bolt after las bolt at it, gouging chunks out of its torso armor, but not doing any significant damage that I could tell. Then a rending crash echoed around the passageway accompanied by a roar of powerful engine and the stench of Prometheum, and bright artificial light which momentarily blinded me. Get down, sir! Jürgen voxed, opening up with the salamander's forward-mounted heavy bolter, the familiar blocky silhouette of the scout vehicle almost filling the tunnel. The hail of explosive bolts chewed their way through the patriarch's sinuous exoskeleton, throwing it off balance in a spray of echo in emulsified viscera. I call. Blech. Davis and I flattened ourselves against the brickwork, the whirling tracks missing us by inches as Saiten collided with ceramite. The impact throwing the creature back as Jürgen brought the salamander to a halt. Excellent timing as always. I congratulated my aide, scrambling into the open passenger compartment. Davis hard on my heels. But I thought you'd be waiting outside. Nowhere to park, sir, Jürgen said. Besides, I heard you might be in trouble. You heard right, I agreed, as my aide and Gage reversed and began charging back up the tunnel, as just he had arrived. Ignoring the trail of sparks and chunks of pulverized brick falling from around us every time he chipped the walls, I scrambled across the pintle mount of heavy bolter and opened up at the towering mass of Broodlord, which seemed disinclined to let bygones be bygones, and was now charging up the tunnel after us, albeit a little more awkwardly than before. Jürgen's first salvo seemed to have injured it, and I lost no time in adding as much as I could to damage. Well, not to be outdone, Davis cracked off a few shots from his last pistol. The abomination fell back as I directed a stream of explosive ordnance at its head, blowing half of it away, but it still wasn't done for. 
continuing to come after us on a wave of pure malevolence. Persistent, isn't it? Jürgen remarked, hosing it down with the heavy flamer. That did it. Thrashing around in its death throes, the creature retracted instinctively back down the tunnel, igniting the distress in the cellar as it went. As we regained the open air, I could already see the flames spreading through the undercroft, cleansing the entire nest of corruption. I had hoped. Well, that seems to be that. Colonel Monstru said. The last of the roof timbers gave way with a shower of sparks and a gout of flame as they toppled into the depths of the burning building. His ice-blue eyes regarded me, as always, with barely concealed suspicion. Though I suppose some will have to search those tunnels once the sappers have dug them out. I imagine they will. I agreed, already certain he had a candidate in mind for the job, and determined to palm it off on somebody else before he made the suggestion. I'd go myself, but I'll be in the capital before the wreckage cools down enough to start poking about down there. The sergeant's already been in touch with the commissariat, and she's quite insistent about hearing my report in person. This meant I'd get to see Winther again a little sooner than I expected, too, which was a welcome bonus. I see. Monstry said clearly put out at being denied another opportunity to nudge me into harm's way, something he did at every opportunity, as he'd never quite believed my growing reputation was merited and seemed to relish putting it to the test. I'm sure we'll find someone. His eyes fell on Davis, who looked about ready to volunteer on the spot. A familiar odor announced the approach of my aide regarded the conflagration with keen apprehension, and handed me a welcome mug of tenor. Well, apart from that, sir. Well, apart from that, sir. He asked for a moment. That was a show. All right, that will do it for another video. I hope you enjoyed a neat little foray into Kane's life before all the other books came into play. A little hint as to Jürgen's little habit of reading porn in the corner. <laughs> and eating a ham sandwich. That's a man anyone would dream to be. I want him to be my friend. <laughs> Anyways, let us say thank you to the ongoing Patreon support of Kokoa, Zach Killer Coffee, Meltdown 480, Eldrick Maldred, Fortis Unam, Daskowski with Wright, and Lilac NPC. If you want to be a Patreon member of the channel, you can tune the link in the description down below. Like the channel, the video, subscribe, the bell icon, you know, the, you know all the rest already. More videos on the way. Keep your eyes posted and open for them. More drawings and other things will be posted onto the community tab now that I actually have a little bit of time. And they... Um, uh, expect a vote to be putting up soon for what I should be reading next. I hope you have a good one. Stay safe out there and have yourselves a good day. Stay safe out there. And remember... Ah! I am now dead. <laughs>